Hello and happy Saturday at all. I'm thrilled to be live on our account today for American Diabetes Month. For everyone who is joining, my name is Abby Bornemeyer and I'm the Social Media and Digital Events Manager here at the American Diabetes Association. And today I am joined by our very special guest, Brianna Hernandez. Get ready to learn and be inspired and learn how diabetes hits different for Brianna. Now I would like to introduce you all to Brianna. Brianna, how are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for being part of this Hits Different talk for American Diabetes Month. We're so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Well, everyone is here and ready to connect with you and just like learn about your journey with diabetes. So if you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, um, that would be awesome. So I'm Brianna. I live in South Florida and I'm 30 years old. I have had diabetes for 22 years. I have one son that's nine years old, two dogs, and I've been married for almost 10 years now. Um, running and exercising is definitely my hobby and I work two jobs. So one of them is a medical, uh, job and then the other one is my own business. So, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. To me. <laughs> you are busy, Brianna. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about what your diagnosis was like 22 years ago? And like, do you remember what was going through your mind at the time when you were diagnosed? I know you were pretty young at the time. I was pretty young. Um, I was seven going on eight years old. I was actually admitted to the hospital for about a good week. Um, back then, diabetes was not really so common or so um, well heard of. So a lot of people were very confused as to what it was or how to respond to it. Um, the technology was nothing like we have today, definitely. So um, it was a very traumatic experience um, for my family and myself. I just remember thinking like, is this going to be forever? Am I not going to be able to have the cake when I want or the candy when I want or the soda when I want? Um, so it just hit me as a child and it made me grow up a little bit faster. Definitely. That's hard. I know like being a kid is already hard enough and to have this diagnosis then come upon you, it's like, what, what is this? What do I do? Yes. It's the Super confusing time. For sure. Did anyone in your family have diabetes or was this kind of new then for you and your family? This was totally new. No one in my family is diabetic. I was basically, I'm basically still the only one um, besides the fact of, of course, like type two is in my family, but type one is especially juvenile is not in my family. So it caught everybody by surprise. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sure it was hard too for your parents to hear that as well. And so, oh, yeah to go through that it, because it doesn't just affect the person living with it. It's a whole, it affects everyone, the whole family. Oh, definitely. It still affects my mom to this day and I'm 30 years old. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah. yeah. well, no, so it is, diabetes is a journey and, you know, but I'm sure though it's in a good way. Your parents though and everyone, you know, they're all there to support you and, on your journey. So I'm sure it's in a good way, though. That's Definitely. It. Yes. Um, what would you say are some physical um, and mental challenges that you've faced over the years as a result of your diabetes? Um, physical challenges after having my son uh, a little bit over nine years ago, I actually uh, my body went completely out of whack. Um, I was diagnosed with extreme fatty liver, almost like cirrhosis, uh, high cholesterol, just my liver functions, my diabetes, my A1C was just up there in like 11s and 12s. Um, it was just a complete nightmare. So I ended up completely changing the way that I live my life. I found a hobby of running and um, I overcame it. And I was able to get rid of everything and to control everything. 
and on my own, just with exercise and, and diet and weight and, and everything com- combined together. It was just a, a definite life experience, physical, mental. I mean, diabetes takes such a toll on our mental health because we're constantly being told that we have to be within range Mm -hmm. and we have to be perfect. Um, But I think the day that I accepted that no matter what, we're not gonna be perfect, but we're going to try to be. And we're not gonna keep judging ourselves like outside people do. We're just gonna continue fighting and pushing through. And I kind of have this thing that I tell myself for my own mental health is I'm thriving and I'm surviving. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> because and it like rhymes. I find it to be so cute. But it's seriously true. Um, so many people judge you. So that takes a lot of your mental health. And just constantly being, you know, if your sugar is high, you have a headache or you're very thirsty. And it's like, what are you doing at the time and how it's affecting you like that, whether you're working, exercising taking care of your son, helping him with his homework. So it just, you have to take it one thing at a time. You really can't stress over it. And the days that I find myself at wit's end is the days that I'm like, okay, I'm gonna eat a whole bunch of stuff that I don't have to do insulin for. And I'm gonna just eat the ham or eat, you know, chicken or salmon or things like that that I know are, good on carbs and stuff like that and kind of reset my body. Um, But I used to judge myself a lot and that really played a toll on my mental and my physical health because I was constantly stressed out about wanting to be perfect and wanting to be within range. So you kind of have to thrive and survive. (laughs) Thriving and surviving. I I really like that saying though. I think it's inspirational for so many people because there is so so much pressure and even like with family members or friends telling you like, hey, you shouldn't be eating that or you shouldn't be doing this. Did you check your numbers? You know, you don't, I mean, you have to manage your diabetes obviously and take care of yourself, but also no one is perfect at the same time. And you don't want to allow that to take a huge toll on your mental health. So that's super important. And I'm really glad that you did say that. Thank you. That's yeah, it's, I mean, I have met, at least I have very two close friends that are diabetic. We went to high school with each other and we are constantly venting to each other about our endocrinologist and our families and our friends that are constantly like, well, why are you eating the cake? And why are you doing this? And questioning everything. And it's just, kind of like a lack of knowledge on their end and you truly don't know what it feels like until you're in the shoes. So it's really, um, number one, it's educating the person asking because, you know, constantly I'm being asked like, why do you have to do that? And why do you have to do this? So I take it as a, a opportunity to really educate someone so that maybe they can pass on the information and everyone can be more educated about diabetes and diet and and the way insulin works. And it's just, I mean, it's complicated, but maybe to be a little bit nicer sometimes with the comments they have to say. Um, But every diabetic goes through this and it's just so difficult to deal with. And you have to have crocodile skin to pull through it sometimes. And it's taken maybe I would say more than 22 years because I'm still working on myself and I'm still, there's some days that I'm like, man, that, that person really put me down, but you know, I have to keep reminding myself like, okay, this is just one bad day. Tomorrow's going to be a totally different, um, way that I'm going to interpret it. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to do my regular routine. I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning and it's going to be a brand new day because everybody has an off day. So, yeah. (laughs) And, you know, through these talks and everything that we're doing throughout American Diabetes Month, like we really do want to focus all 
on educating people because, I mean, not everyone does know truly what diabetes is. And, you know, there is that stigma around it. And that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to break that stigma, you know, through having these real conversations with real people and everything and trying to educate people because, you know, knowledge is power and not everyone knows yet what, yes. what it is. And so I think once they hear stories from people, you know, it might click a little bit more for them and hopefully then they can share some of that information um, with people as well, just so that people know you're not alone as well. And, you know, like you said too, just because you have one bad day, um, you know, maybe with comments from someone or not feeling the support that you deserve, you know, tomorrow is a new day. So I am glad you said that. Very important for everyone watching um, to know. Thank you. Absolutely. So you did talk a little bit about, you know, um, how you manage your mental health with support um, from other people and through running. Could you talk a little bit more about that and um, like what it does do for you and how you got involved in running maybe? That would be great. So this is the best story ever. <laughs> um. Back in 2013, I had my son. So now he's nine. He just turned nine about a month ago. And um, my diabetes went out of whack. My whole body went out completely whack. Um, my liver, I was diagnosed with extreme fatty liver, um, high cholesterol. My A1C was literally pushing 12, almost 13. Like it was bad. Just I felt lethargic the whole time. My sugars would not come down. Um, I was overweight by about 20 pounds, which I am a little person. I am five feet tall. So 20 pounds is, um, at least for myself, it was a lot at the time. I had just had my son, but I needed to lose the weight. And I needed to find a way to shut it off and to get my energy back. Um, I have this joke with a lot of my friends, and I call myself, I have crackhead energy. And I've always had that. I am the person that can wake up at five o'clock in the morning and be up till one, two o'clock in the morning with no nap and just go, go, go. And I, I love that about myself. So I had lost that in that time. Um, so one day I'm at work and I find somebody with like a run Disney shirt on. And I'm like, Disney running, what? And I asked uh, the patient about it and he was telling me all about run Disney and how you run through the parks and you can do a, you know, all these distances. And I signed up, I signed up for my first half marathon in 2015 and I started training for it. I followed the plan on the website and I lost my 20 pounds. I got my life back, uh, my energy, my liver enzymes went away um, from being elevated, of course. And I just felt like myself again. And I got addicted very quickly to run Disney because they do their uh, sporting events so perfectly, at least in my eyes. Um, it is pricey, I'm not going to lie, but I literally work to run. <laughs> and it motivates me to keep going and to keep training and to keep fit, um, to cross train, to do my um, bike, my uh, standard elliptical bike um or to run outside or to just do like a warm up and stretching and stuff like that it keeps me active knowing that i have an event coming up um a race coming up it just keeps me going and i have found that if i don't keep something at least on my calendar i fall behind so i always make sure that i have something on my calendar you know pushing me to really get up and say Oh no, I just worked like a nine hour day. I have to go home and clean, but no, I'm too tired to work out. No, on the contrary, I have something to look forward to and to train for, to make sure that I'm ready for. So I have to push myself out of that. I'm so tired mindset. So running has truly changed my life. Um, I have done uh, with this exception of this past week, I have now done 42 run Disney races alone, not including local. And I'm pretty darn proud of it. And I don't plan to stop. And it's something that gets addicting. Um, but it's exercise and 
for a diabetic, as you probably know, exercise is the best medicine. It lowers your sugar. It gives you just so many happy feels at the end when you're done. And it makes you feel like you are on top of the world. Like you can complete anything. And I feel like a lot of diabetics need to feel like that, like what we call runner's high. Mm -hmm. And um, at first, of course, I didn't start being your average nine minute per mile um, person, but I still consider myself to be a runner and anybody can, as long as you have the guts to do it. And as long as you have the discipline and the want up here, you can do it. So wow. I'm addicted. I'm totally so addicted. Cool. <laughs> so were you a big Disney fan before doing Run Disney? Did part of what got you motivated to do these runs besides, you know, seeing the shirt? Did Was it because you're also a Disney fan as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. I've been a Disney fan my entire life. Yeah. Um, So when I saw, like, the Disney and the running together, I was like, I need that. <laughs> this is the perfect combination. Yes, it's the perfect excuse to go to Disney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's so cool. It was awesome. Wow. Well, you should be really proud of yourself, and we definitely are very proud of you. I mean, that is amazing. Thank you. So you've done 42 Disney runs so far. That is so, that is so cool. Very it's, inspiring. And I don't plan to stop. And anybody that does it will probably be just like me or worse. Um, it just makes you feel good. And it just gives you all these happy feels on it. Like, it just is so addicting, truly. And running is even, not even run Disney, but like, running in general is just so good for you it gets your heart pumping you know it's good cardio and it just works out your whole body so that's why i wanted to stick with the running <laughs> that's awesome so i'm sure people too who are watching you know some people might be living with diabetes and yeah. might be curious too about um, getting more involved with physical activity or running. So how do you manage your diabetes when you're doing these long runs? I am so happy that you asked me that. So I'm actually going to bring up a little bit of a scare because I like to share just everything, not just the picture perfect stuff, mm -hmm. um, especially like with social media, wanting to be all perfect and all it's not, we are not perfect. So um about a month ago um and i've been on my pump here's my pump i've been on the omnipod for the past almost five months now and it has been a complete struggle to find out what's the perfect basal rate uh for me while i'm exercising so when i typically exercise it's not your typical walk it's very intense cardio or i'm on the bike um the standard bike uh, for example, with a resistance of high 80s. So I really push myself and I really want to break a sweat and I really love testing myself. So um, getting back to that, about a month ago, I had such a low blood sugar that lasted literally two hours. I had back-to-back um, -back sodas, juices, um, glucose tabs, you name it, I had it, and my sugar would not go up. And so finally, I was literally about to lose consciousness, and my husband had to call 911 on me, and I, I almost lost consciousness. I wasn't responding, but I knew what was going on around me. So um, luckily, they just, you know, gave me a shot of some dextrose there, and they kind of brought me back as soon as they kind of loaded me down from the um, from the truck. I kind of started waking up away and like kind of able to talk, but I was still aware of what was going on. It was like an out of body experience, and um, I've I've been struggling and dealing with some very um, personal demons when it comes to exercising and going low. Um, and going low like 10 minutes into my workout. 
So I wasn't able to completely finish my workout and that alone frustrated me. And I found myself in such a dark, dark hole. And it was so bad and I was just so frustrated. Um, so finally I was able to just get myself at a place with my endocrinologist where I said, okay, what if I just turn off my pump while I'm exercising? Because at this point, any little basal rate that I was putting still had me going low. Mm -hmm. So um, it would just prevent me from exercising and feeling good after exercising. So I was very, just, I was not a happy camper. Um, so finally that was fixed. And I'm so happy because this past weekend, I ran 22 miles with no blood, low blood sugar. So I was That's so awesome. happy. <laughs> Um, and of course I was eating my Skittles and, you know, drinking my water and checking my sugar throughout the races. And, um, it was such a sense of relief. I cried with my friends because they knew what I was going through. And, um, the team that randomly, we all joined each other on the race course, um, was like, wow, you didn't have any lows, like you did it. And they got me through it. One of them got me the water. The other one made sure that my sugar was good. Like everybody was always on top of me at all times. So I am blessed to have people that supported me that way. And it felt amazing to have that support. And no lows. That's <laughs> so, awesome. Yay. Oh, that's good. And you had that support system too, which is so, that's awesome to have that as well when you're doing these things, having people that you can count on who are going to be watching you every, you know, every step of the way. Um, that's so encouraging and awesome. And I mean, it's scary. It's scary too, the experience that you, you faced, but you know, going forward too, it seems like you know, you have a little bit more of a plan now in place and you, you know, you know what to do and what to expect when you're feeling those, those sorts of ways. And if there's a time too, where you can't finish something to like, don't let that, don't let that make you feel down because, you know, like you said, we're not all perfect. And sometimes our bodies just need a little bit more rest and they can't, we have to listen to them. So you're I totally right. You are totally right. Thank you so much, though, for be sharing that story, both of those stories. Um, I think it's important for people to see, you know, both sides of it, because, I mean, there are so many struggles living with diabetes, and it's important to share, you know, the ups and the downs with it. So, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, well, so we've been talking a lot about, you know, different changes and um, things you've experienced with your diabetes. Um, but is there anything else that you've, you've witnessed um, change-wise over the last 22 years since you've been diagnosed with diabetes? Was there a moment in particular that made you um, realize maybe that your diabetes is different than it was when you were seven going on eight years old? Oh, definitely. Um, so before I would eat different foods or I would do different things that would just shoot up my blood sugar. And now it's like, I kind of know what to do and what foods affect me more than they used to. And like anything white, I can't eat. If not, my sugar will be in the 300s in about an hour. Um, so white rice, white pasta, white bread, things like that will definitely shoot up my sugar. Um, it's actually better for me to have, you know, an ice cream versus like a mango, cause mango will do the same thing to me. And these are things that I didn't know that affected me back then, but now I do know. And food was a major thing. Food has always been a major factor um, for me. And also the way that I exercise is different. Um, I was in dance class when I was seven, eight years old. So now that I run like for exercise purposes, now it's like, okay, you have to kind of watch it because you're not just like dancing, you know, little tutu ballet. No, it's, it's cardio and it's intense cardio. 
So I really have to make sure that I'm eating and stopping my uh, pump an hour before and really being disciplined with it. Because if not, I'll, it'll just be a whole big mess. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. No, I'm glad, though, too, that you shared a little bit about how over the years, too, you've realized, you know, what you can and can't, what your body can handle and what it can't. Um, I think it's so important, too, just over time to figure those things out. And that's something, too, like when you're first diagnosed, you're not going to know that necessarily. It's you're going to find out those things over time. So it's important. And people, yeah. too, who are just newly diagnosed, you're not going to know that, like we said, you're not going to know that right away. So don't you stress yourself out on it. But, you know, the more you live with diabetes, um, the more it becomes part of your routine. Um, you'll figure those things out just like Brianna did. <laughs> um, so Brianna also too. So we were just talking a little bit now about, you know, newly diagnosed. So that brings me to my next question. Um, what advice would you give someone being diagnosed with type 1 diabetes today or the parents of someone um, newly diagnosed? Find people that are in the same shoes as you and vet to each other. That's so important. Because if you're not able to vent, you're not able to get your frustrations out and you are not able to express yourself. And diabetes is something, especially for a parent, because I am one now myself, and I understand my mom, how she was how when I was diagnosed at seven, eight years old. You need to vent mm -hmm. and you need to get all those frustrations out and really find a community and friends that you stay in touch with. Maybe go to lunch once a month or you know every other week and really like touch base and say, can you believe my endo told me this? And can you believe this happened to me? And just have it go back and forth because we mentally need that. Um, diabetes is something that you can't really set an alarm and then you wake up whenever you want. It's something that is stressful. You lose sleep over it. Um, if you your body just decides let's have a low blood sugar in the middle of the night then your whole day the next day is thrown off because you're so tired from that low blood sugar in the middle of the night and finding the community like yours and really talking about it really helps um finding what motivates you also will also help um you are blessed as well if you are newly diagnosed with diabetes these days um, and I know it's, you're like, what are you talking about? You're blessed. You have the best technology out there these days. You have sensors. You have pumps that are tubeless. When I was diagnosed, the pumps had tubes and you would get wrapped around in them while you were sleeping. And you would have to disconnect it while in the shower and go to the beach or the pool. And it would it's it's gotten such better technology um that it's just like we we're, we're blessed to be able to look at a at a monitor and say oh my blood sugar is this instead of constantly pricking our fingers and you know damaging our fingers and constantly being like thinking oh i wonder what my sugar is well you can just look up and look at your meter um so for a newly diabetic it's hard it's freaking hard because it is your whole life changes. Your whole personality might change too. Um, it makes you grow up like a lot and fast, especially if you are probably a young adult or a teenager or even a kid, um, even a parent, your whole life changes as a parent. You're constantly monitoring your kid even more like a hound. Um, and that adds more stress on both you as a parent and a child or even the newly diagnosed person because you are constantly thinking what's gonna happen to me now. But at the end of the day, it's gonna be okay. And you're gonna figure it out and you're gonna find your way through and you're gonna make diabetes work for you. You're not gonna let diabetes get in the way of anything else because I sure as heck didn't. And it's something that you just have to push through every day and just know that you have to push through and that's it. And as long as you're okay with that, then it's fine. It's like having a full-time job. 
and it's taking care of yourself and taking deep breaths. And I hope I covered it all because that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> oh no, that was that was amazing. And you also too answered what my last question was going to be too. Oh, I'm so which sorry. Was, no, that's perfect. Which was how how do you think diabetes is different today? And I think I mean it's so important what you what you were saying too about the technology. It's so different um, from when you were younger to now. I mean scary it doesn't take away that aspect but i mean things are getting so much better and things are continuing to evolve um and i think we're only going to go farther as we you know keep going forward which is really great but i like how you said to you're not alone and find that support system you know find that group of people um, who care about you and want to support you and help you on your journey because you can't keep those, you know, things kept inside. You can't keep it inside. No one can. It just just wears on you and makes things harder. So, you know, talk with talk with other people. There's a whole um, there's a whole community out there um, willing of people willing willing to support you every step of the way. And Absolutely. here too at the ADA, we're only you know, arms reach away, send us a message on Instagram or, you know, reach out online on our website. We have our blog page. Um, I heard, highly encourage all of you to share your story, just like Brianna did. You know, um, you can you can also do that by visiting um, diabetes.org slash blog. And just just let us know what your journey with diabetes has been like. Yes. We're always here to listen. So Wow. Definitely. Well, thank you, Brianna. This has been amazing. And just a few takeaways too, as we wrap up, you know, if you're living with diabetes, it doesn't change who you are as a person. You know, um, you are still you. Brianna's Brianna, and she is still chasing her dreams. She is doing amazing things out there and you can still do that too um and i know we say it a lot here at the ada but like diabetes is a journey and you know no journeys are the same so that's why it's so important to find that support system um, but yeah reach out to us anytime especially there's no better time to reach out than now which is american diabetes month um this month you know throughout the rest of the month we'll be sharing um, additional stories. Um, you'll get to hear from a lot of different people, a lot of different voices, you know, about the um, about the hardships, but also about the journeys and the new experiences that people have faced over the years of living with diabetes. So it'll all be right here. And I encourage all of you to also visit um, diabetes.org slash hit different, hits different to also learn how you can get involved with this month's activations. But Brianna, thank you so much. And we would love to have you um, back on again um, to update us all on your exciting Disney runs <laughs> and adventures. Um, but for now, thank you, Brianna, and thank, thank you for you. everyone for taking time out of your busy Saturday um, and weekend just to listen and connect with us. Um, we're so we're so thankful to have had you share your story, Brianna, and thank I hope you. everyone listening um, has been inspired, just like I have been. Um, but thank you so much, and thank you for have a great me. weekend. And until then. Bye. Bye.